Hi guys, welcome back to the series on machine learning using Google ML Kit and TensorFlow Lite in iOS. So today we are going to discuss face recognition in iOS. So we have already done this in uh, Android. So if you remember, we had the example of Will and Chad. So Will Farrell and Chad Smith. So we will try to do the same example in iOS. So it already works. There is an uh, example on the GitHub repo. So the link will be in the description. If you run the app, uh, if you check out the code and build it and you are able to run it, this is what you will see. There's a button for face recognition. Uh, the code is there to do it on camera, but I've only added buttons for photos to just make it easier. So the steps are similar. So first we add the faces. So we detect faces and we label them. So once we detect a face, we will click on add a face and we will give the name. So this is chat and then let's add will. So this is actually a very good test because the faces are a little similar and it actually gives us little confidence when we roll out the product. So we have added both the faces. Now, if I select a photo that has both of them, uh, the model should be able to differentiate between them. So yeah, you can see here, it has correctly identified Will Farrell and Chad Smith. So this is the demo for face recognition. Uh, this actually happens in two steps. So if you remember the uh, video, if you remember the last video, we had done face detection. So the first step is always face detection. We use Google ML Kit for that. Uh, so we have this Google ML Kit, ML Kit face detection, and then we use TensorFlow Lite Swift for uh, using a custom model that we have trained on mobile face net. So this is done using, a, so this was done by another person. I will add the link to his blog in the description. Uh, so it is based on mobile face net. The TensorFlow Lite model is already part of this project. So what it does is once you detect a face and we crop the face using the frame given by MLKit, we then convert the data into the in, uh, format that is expected by the TensorFlow Lite model, which is like 112 by 112 square uh, with RGB values only, uh, which are normalized between 0 to uh, 1. Uh, and this we do by dividing it by 255. So this is the, can say, this is the uh, max RGB value. So we normalize the image data and then we pass it to the TensorFlow Lite model. So once we pass the TensorFlow Lite model, it gives us a vector of 192 floating point decimal. Now, the idea is that every face will have a unique, uh, all, almost unique uh, vector. So this vector of 100 into 192 decimal uh, floating point numbers. Now what we do is once you say add a face or register a face, so once you say add a face, we take the face and we store the vector in a dictionary. So dictionary is nothing but a hash map. And we kind of store the name and the known vector in the face dictionary. So if I see register face. Yeah. So we just add the name and the vector. So next time, whenever the another face is detected, so next time when after we have trained the model and then we are giving a new image. So let's select another one. So you can see again it works. So when we give a new image, it again detects two faces and then it runs those two faces through this face net model. And then it will uh, check the distance. So we are using k nearest number uh, or nearest neighbor algorithm. Uh, by using the uh, square root of the distance. And if the distance is less than one, so this is our threshold, if the distance is less than one, then both the vectors are from the same faces. So this is how we are able to identify uh, using these vectors. So we have, it's like a two-step process. The first step is creating a vector by registering your, the first is detecting face and then on the face we run the face net algorithm and get the vector and then we register it in our dictionary. Next time whenever a face is detected we again run the, that new face in the face net model and we get the vector back. Now if those, if the previous vector which is registered in the dictionary and this new vector are similar 
then we have a match and then we display the name on top of it. so yeah with simple application a little complex to build but it can be used for various purposes even attendance management or identifying some people in a crowd so hope you like this videos if something is missing and you want to add in this series please let me know and see you in the next video